All right, today we have got a uh, Dodge Viper V10 cam that was sent in, and it's got uh, 55 millimeter journals, and they want it turned down to uh, standard journals. Uh, 55 millimeters, like two and two inch, 165, and standard it, on a on this engine is. Uh, two and 91 to two and 92, I believe it is. So we got it in the lathe, uh, hang loose, and we'll get into what we're going to do. All right, so I, I, we got it in, we got it set up, and I went ahead, and I didn't have no cameraman yesterday afternoon. I went ahead and turned uh, the last journal and got everything set. So we turned it uh, from two and 165 down to uh, two and 105. So we left about, you know, 14 thousandths, 13, 14 thousandths to grind. So we'll turn all of these journals down to that two and 105. And then when all of that's finished, we'll take it over to the cam grinder <clears throat> and then we'll finish grind all the journals to the the spec in the book and, and like I said, I think it's a thousandths tolerance, but I believe the bottom is two and 91. So one other thing, somebody asked this question. Let me, let me grab a parallel. Hang, hang on one second. So somebody asked about, you know, the difference between a, you know, a 55 millimeter or a 50 millimeter core. So a lot of stuff, you know, and usually when we talk about that stuff, we're talking about, small blocks and big block Chevrolets for the most part. So a standard small block Chevrolet has a one in 868, one in 868 journal. So, uh, you know, the, the bump up is a big block journal, which is like 50, 54 millimeters. No, it's like close to 50 millimeters. It ain't quite 50 millimeters. And then you can go to a 50 millimeter and then you go to a 55 millimeter. And in a big block, generally it's 50, 55 or 60. And what that's doing, what that's allowing to happen is the size of the lobe. So l let me grab a small block roller just for comparison. So this lobe design, so, so this lobe here is designed for a 55 millimeter. This lobe is designed for a standard journal in a small block, but this is a 900 base circle. And so the problem lies in, if you can just imagine, you know, this is a huge solid roller. I mean, it's, it's six, mid 600 lift, 270 ish duration. And you can see how small this lobe is compared to this lobe. And, and this is a big, duration, big lift deal too. And so what happens is the lifter, you know, the smaller this gets, the further the lifter is going down in the lifter bore and hanging out in the engine. And so as it's having to come up the main event, the pressure angle is just extreme. So when, when we're able to, to, and in a small block, it's almost a moot point. If you don't have a raised cam center line, it's just a moot point. Because I don't care how big you make this journal. In a in a four-inch stroke small block Chevrolet with a standard cam location, you must run a 900 base circle. So the journal size is irrelevant. But when you're able to get into an engine family like a big block or... Uh, move the cam up in a small block, now you can run whatever journal size and be able to run a lobe that matches that journal size. Because keep in mind, you know, this is the deal. So, you know, and actually th that lobe is small. So that lobe should be almost touching that parallel. And, and the way, and, and what that does is the bigger that lobe is, the larger that base circle is, the more 
the, the less the pressure angle is when it starts up the main event for the lifter to start rising. And so it's just so much easier on lifters, lifter bores, it's so much easier on the cam itself. And then when you can have a large core that's rigid, you know, as the, I mean, you can see how small the spool is, the root diameter. I mean, it's probably like 850. And then you look at this root diameter. And then, so imagine this cam in a 60 millimeter, how big that root diameter is. And then the same thing, you know, when you add lobe lift, as lobe lift continues to grow, then, you know, like we talked about in many other cam videos, the, the, the height of the lobe is fixed. We can't be beyond the journal. So the only thing that's left is for the base circle to shrink. So, you know, as the base circle shrinks, then, you know, we want that bigger journal so we don't have to make such a small uh, base circle. And then the spool gets little and then the cam gets all flexible and twisty and, you know, harmonics and, and all of that crazy stuff. So, uh, so anyway, so that was just, you know, somebody, well, more than one person has asked about that. So I hope that that makes sense. Uh, let me put this back and then we'll, we'll get to turn in on these other journals. All right. So, uh, we use, we use, uh, WNMG, uh, Trigon inserts. I, I've got a source that we really like. We do a lot of heavy turning and, uh, these give you six sides versus a lot of people run a CNMG. It's like an 80 degree diamond and you only get four sides that you can actually use in a, in a lathe. So, I mean, they do make some holders that use the other side, but it's, it's not good for anything but facing. That's a whole nother story. But for the money, th this is the winner to me. Cause like I say, you get six usable sides versus four usable sides and the inserts are essentially the same money. So just, just the FYI. All right. And I mean, it's hard, but it, it turns good. It's 8620, but it ain't, it ain't the end of the world. Well, we take about 20 on diameter per pass. Just trying not to put, you know, we don't want to put a bunch of heat in it or kill inserts. Yeah, them chips is hot, hot tamales. Because we got a shoulder, I'm gonna flip it around to rough the last one in. Or the first one, depends on how you look at it. Well, 
Well, maybe not. The dial pin's hitting the center. I'm going to have to pull that dial pin out. Some of them come out easy, some of them don't. I hope this will be an easy one. Bingo. Chamfer the journals back. And then flip it around and do the last one. So that is all roughed in. Um, the next operation obviously will be, we'll get it in the grinder and get everything set up. And we have a uh, in process gauge that actually hangs around the journal that measures it while we're grinding. That way we know when we get to the, the finished size. So I think we'll make this an episode and then we'll grind it in another episode. So uh, stay tuned for part two.